I'm not saying Brooks doesn't have any decent shoes, but when I look at the progress that Asics, Saucony, Nike, Adidas, and even Puma are having, Brooks is pretty darn far behind. If I was a Brooks pro athlete, I may be a little disappointed in that progress. Maybe it's all of those cereal shoes, St. Patty's Day themed shoes, and beer shoes that have kept them from building the progress. But when 2023 came around and their first release and the Hyperion Max came out, I was pretty darn excited to see, is this the shoe that helps put Brooks back up on a pedestal with those high performance shoes like all these other companies? As always, interval workouts, long run, and multiple easy runs before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, which to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed about. When you just take a look at the specs of this shoe and look at it on paper, the Hyperion Max should be an incredible shoe. And there's two big things that stand out to me as awesome on this shoe. The first being the weight. This shoe feels incredibly light. It's stated that it's a 7.8 ounce shoe in men's size nine. And I will tell you, this feels significantly lighter underfoot than a 7.8 ounce shoe. I never look at the actual weight of a shoe until after all of my runs are done so I can mentally try to guess, okay, where does this thing fall? And I was guessing in the low sevens, potentially in the high sixes for this shoe. So when I actually looked it up and saw that it was 7.8, the weight of this shoe is a fantastic plus and Brooks is doing a nice job with being able to keep the weights of their shoes down. Second thing that I think is absolutely incredible about this shoe is the upper. There have been companies that are nailing uppers and there have been companies that have had uppers fall apart. And this is one of those uppers that is absolutely nailed. The material is extremely breathable. It feels really, really high quality. So I know this upper is gonna go the distance. The second thing is where the padding is, is the exact right space to have padding in a do it all tempo, long run, sometimes easy day shoe. And the tongue padding is absolutely perfect. It's completely flat on the edges where it lays inside of the shoe on your foot, but right on top where you're lacing it down and tightening it down, there is a lot more padding in that space and it is absolutely perfect. If I had the ability to take this upper and put it on other midsoles, I think it would be an absolutely incredible shoe. And yes, you heard that right. Take this upper off and move it to other shoes because that's the only two things that I found great about this shoe. So what was wrong with the midsole? When I compare the Hyperion Max to the other shoes in its categories, kind of that shoe that does everything, great on tempos, great on those longer runs, and can do easy days, you think Rebel V3, you think Nova Blast, you think Endorphin Speed, this shoe just isn't there in the midsole category. The ride and the most important part to me of a shoe is how that midsole feels. When I first put this shoe on before I ran and did it in my house, I got really, really excited. It reminded me of a shoe I liked. And when I put it on, tied it up, I go, it feels like the Skechers Go Run Razor 3 that I really, really liked. But when you're a run specialty company and you're getting compared to Skechers, that's not so good. But then, I started running in it and I go, it doesn't remind me of that shoe. It actually reminds me of a shoe that I really didn't like, the Nike Zoom Fly 4, where it just felt clunky, no return, and despite its really light weight, it didn't give me the juice I was looking for. When I think of the interval runs that I did, which was just sub marathon pace around 540, 550 on the intervals, it didn't give me that pushback. It didn't give me that return that I would want from a shoe that is expected to be part of interval workouts. On the easy runs, it was not soft enough for me. And yes, I do have a bias towards softer midsole. So if you like an extremely firm midsole, this may be the shoe for you. But on easy runs, it definitely was not soft enough. And when I took it on my 16 mile run, that was a progression run from 720s down to about 650s. It was just a shoe, like nothing special, nothing stood out to me. It was just kind of there. And that's the problem is it just felt like a shoe, which leads me to my second thing about the shoe, $170 for a shoe that simply is 
just a shoe. When I'm comparing it to the other shoes in its class, like I talked about, Noah Blast, Rebel V3, Endorphin Speed, Hoka Mach 5, this is significantly more expensive than those shoes that are far superior shoes. Even though I didn't like the Endorphin Speed 3, it is still better than this shoe in my opinion. And so that leads me to going, if it was a great shoe, yeah, 170 wouldn't feel that bad. But when it's just a shoe that nothing stands out other than it's kind of light and it has a good upper, 170 is really steep in a time like we're having now where everyone is pinching pennies. So with a really bummer midsole and a price point that's pretty high, those stack up really heavy when making the decision on whether or not I would use this shoe moving forward or encourage you guys to buy it. So with that being said, am I gonna keep running in it? Probably, but the only reason is it was $170. If this shoe was not $170 where I didn't have to pay that kind of money, I probably would not run it anymore because it's not gonna be the first shoe that I would ever pick up. But some midsoles do break open and do feel better as you put more miles in. And like I said, I'm just around 50 miles in these shoes with the four different runs that I've done. But if somebody asked me my thoughts today on whether or not they should buy the shoe, I would say absolutely not. Not for $170. And I really want Brooks to come out with some great shoes, which is why I was excited to buy it. But Hyperion Max, not a great shoe in my book. Oh,